Hey, Chandler Bolt here, and joining me today is Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo. Uh, Tony and Elisa are the best-selling authors of a bunch of different books. Um, they've got uh, the, the uh, one book they did with us at Self-Publishing School called The Six Pillars of Intimacy. They've got a book called The Seven Days of Sex Challenge. They've got Connect Like You Did When You First Met. They've got other books. They've now, we were just talking about right before this, there's since publishing their newest book, The Six Pillars of Intimacy. Uh, they have uh, uh, published a workbook, all kinds of fun things uh, in the works. Uh, so they joined Self-Publishing School about a year ago. Uh, we've been working with them on their book. Really cool to see the journey. Yeah. Uh, I think, uh, uh, you know, one of the best titles and covers of, of the last year. And I think just a really quality book. So it's been, it's been cool to see uh, just everything that's happened over the last year. So welcome. Great to have you guys here. Oh, it's awesome to be here. Yeah, thank you so much, Chandler. Yeah, so, um, you know, let's, let, let's start with why books. I mean, it's obvious that you've made an intentional effort to create books and to kind of create this, use them as a core part of your business. Um, why, why is that? Well, we're in the marriage niche. And so we, we bring encouragement and hope to marriages. And one of the things we've learned over the years, and I don't think we knew this when we wrote our first book 10 years mm -hmm. ago, but definitely when we wrote The Six Pillars of Intimacy, it was very intentional to have it just be excellent in all parts was because we know married folks love books and they love paperback books. They love them mm -hmm. in their hands. They love touching, mm -hmm. feeling. And so when we, when we went to write The Six Pillars of Intimacy, it was very intentional because that's where our people are. They, yeah. they yeah. want to pick up a book. They want to hold it. They want to read it. Cool. That's great. And, and how did you originally hear about self-publishing school and why, why did you decide to, to work with us? Gosh, we started talking uh -huh. and Elisa and I came together. So we've, we've written five other books, four of them together, mm -hmm. one she did on her own. Mm -hmm. And I was in a place where I really felt like we need to have the best. Yeah. This needs to be excellent mm -hmm. in all levels. And I was like, we can't do this on our own. The other times we've done them, we've gone to fights, we've gone to issues. It, it, it drags on and on. Yeah. And so we started searching and I found SPS, did a bunch of research. Uh, come to find out you used to live in San Diego, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so I don't know, that was just an interesting thing because we live in San Diego. Yeah. And uh, it just sort of like, oh, well, this that's cool. This guy used to live here in San Diego. And I think we had some mutual friends maybe. Mm -hmm. um, so I just jumped on. I was like, oh, this is exactly what we need. Um, yeah. It's not full bore. Like everything is done for us because we yeah. wanted to write it. We wanted to do that piece, but we yeah. had the coaching beside us to, to help us along. Yeah, That's cool. And, and cool to see, because I think a lot of times when people have published multiple books before, they think, oh, yeah, I've done this. Like, I, I don't know that I really need your help. But it's just cool even going through Amazon. It's like, hey, you, you've got some great books um, and, and the books have done well. And then just to see the both the success and I feel like the quality differential just oh, like yeah. up level oh, um, yeah. with this most recent book, that's, uh, that gets me excited. Um, and, and I think it's, it, it's just like a testament of you guys implementing it but then also just that, like a, a process that helps lead to a better outcome. Um, Absolutely. I think it's really cool. Yeah, it was definitely, you know, when Tony first mentioned self-publishing school, I, I was a little skeptical. I'm like, because like you said, we've written five other books. Yeah. And yet when I, when I look at this book compared to the other five, it's like night and day difference mm -hmm. for me in, you know, everything from just having a coach to hold you accountable. And I'm a, I'm a marriage coach myself. So I totally understand yeah. accountability, um, which eased a lot of the tension between us, between us, mm -hmm. but it wasn't just, it wasn't just our coach there. It was all of the resources yeah. that you know, in the Rolodex that mm -hmm. were available to us through self-publishing school that yeah. literally leveled up the book, everything from editors to, you know, cover design, interior design, the Front entire matter, process. Back matter. Cool. All of that made it so easy. Mm -hmm. That's so cool. Yeah. yeah. That's so cool. And so great to hear. Um, did you, but, uh, did, did you guys ever see the, the Henry cloud or uh, the Gary Chapman interview on the self-publishing school podcast? No. no. Ooh, that would be a good, it's like, okay. uh, I, I was, I was trying to line up the timing. I'm like, huh, that may be a bit about the time. So I was wondering if that's how you found us originally, but the things I really ask a lot of questions. And so for anyone who's listening to this or watching this, if you are a coach or a counselor or therapist or in any uh, you know, type of practice where you're having one-on-one -on -one conversations with people, those two episodes might be helpful. Um, 
and and the five i think it's really interesting the five love languages um and i think you guys did something really well that he did really well as well was we create a framework mm -hmm. like that's instantly when i saw in the mastermind community i think it was maybe even you getting your first covers it's like six pillars of intimacy i'm just like yes <laughs> like that is it um it's so killer and it's a framework right and yeah. so i remember asking um dr henry cloud and then also gary chapman how they did that and i'm going to ask the same question to you guys which is all right you have all of these sessions these one-on-one -on -one sessions with people and that's kind of where the five love languages came from that's where boundaries came from um I said, how do you synthesize that into a framework mm. that is easy for people to understand mm. and that's also promotable? And yes. so that's the question I got to ask them. It might be fun for you guys to go back and listen to, to, to their thoughts, but I, I would love to ask that to you guys as well. How did you do that with this book? And what would be your advice for other people who want to do that with their one-on-one -on -one work? Yeah, if you're in a place, like I said, I'm a marriage coach. I've been coaching couples and individuals for, gosh, almost 10 years now. Yep. And so a lot of it was, what's that language that you hear over and over again? Mm -hmm. What are the challenges that are, people are facing? And so much like we were just with a group last night who have just gone through the book as a small group study and what they were saying, and we've heard it, you know, it's, it shows up in a lot of the reviews and whatnot is it sounded like you were inside my head. It sounded like you were speaking my mm -hmm. language. It sounded like these were my, these were my problems or our life. And what I would yeah. say is if you're in that space where you're hearing things over and over again, you can write the book because you already know the language. You don't have to get all fancy or theoretical or, or use you know complicated words. Just speak in the way that your people speak. Mm -hmm. And it's so easy to take their ideas and you know look at what's, what's the framework? What do you find yourself teaching or coaching over and over again? What are the, those areas? And then you know put that together and you package it up, call it a framework and deliver it to the people because somebody's breakthrough is on the other side of you putting pen mm. to paper yep. and getting that framework out. That's yeah. Great. Anything you want to add to that, Tony? I would say for us, it, it, especially around the six pillars of intimacy, and we've been in this marriage world for 14 years now, mm -hmm. the thing that I kept hearing from a lot of folks is like, I, I want deeper intimacy. And so when we would dive in with them, I'd say, okay, well, what does that really mean mm -hmm. to you? And they go, well, I want more sex. And that just allowed us to go, okay, well, there's more to it than just sex. Right. We talk a lot about it on our podcast. I get it. And, and so for us to get that framework, we were able to put in different pillars of mm -hmm. intimacy so we could help folks to, to understand, like, it's not just sex. Sex is one component, and yet your emotional intimacy is important. Your financial intimacy is important. And so bringing that framework together and then with the pillars, learning what that looks like, um, we were able to bring that framework all together. Mm -hmm. mm, that's great. And then did, did you kind of, uh, did you sit down and synthesize and create the frameworks as part of the book? Did you create the frameworks, field test them and then say, hey, I think they're ready. Now we should write a book. How did that process look like? Yeah. So we started with, we actually started with a it's like a great story. 24 page ebook. Well, even going back before that, we spoke at a marriage event. Oh, that's right. You we, do the marriage event. We you spoke at a that. marriage event and I had put together, um, it's actually the, the image on the back of the book. And I had put together these six pillars with like a triangle on top because it was just a slide in a presentation. And originally we had called it the power six. That was a presentation name. We called it the power six. Yeah. Horrible. It was, it was <laughs> like, and that's why I tell this, because you know, this is just the humility Awful. in, you know, what's that author's journey. And so we had done this presentation. We had talked about the power six. We come off the stage and people start coming up to us in the, in the conversation, the discussion time. And they're talking about these six pillars. Yeah. Because that had been the image oh. that they saw. They didn't catch the name. They saw the mm -hmm. image and called it six mm -hmm. pillars. And so from that point, we actually, we started talking about it on our podcast. We started, that's when we floated the ebook. Well, Great. we got, well, I made sure that six pillars of intimacy.com was available. Grab that thing really quick. Well, and there were only what three, like there's three or four, like actual hits. Like when you search six pillars of intimacy in 2020, there were only three yeah. hits. So mm. now we've got a name that nobody's using. Yeah. And so we could build around it. And then we, we wrote a, a quick 24 page PDF. Uh, just talked about them really quick, easy, 20, you know, like 24 uh, point fonts, big, big pictures, 
put something similar to what you see on the cover now um, and just put it out there. And we had thousands and thousands and thousands of people download that. No way. And so how, that's how they find it and how they download it through our podcast, through the website, yeah. Uh, yeah. through our Facebook groups, Instagram, you know, we, we put it out on our mm-hmm. email list um, and we would just go, okay, get it, grab it. And that's where we begin to test it and go, oh, are they grabbing it? Mm-hmm. Do they understand where we're going with this? And they did. And so that was it last June, we were in that spot where it's like, it's time to write this book. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. That's cool. Um, you, you alluded to this a little bit earlier, and this is actually something I wanted to ask you guys, um, is, is the conflict that comes in, in writing the book. Um, and, uh, and I think one of the hardest things to do is, is co-author a book. Yes. Uh, it, it's, maybe you've heard me say it's kind of like trying to paint a painting and having two hands on the paintbrush. Yes. Uh, and that's yeah, really difficult. Uh, and, and, and so I'm curious, uh, I, I, the lessons that you guys learned from writing a book with a co-author and tips that you have for other co-authors. I'll, I'll let you marinate for a sec and, yeah. and go on a kind of a side trail, which is I, I interviewed, this might be another one, a good one to listen to on this podcast is Leif Babin, the co-author with uh, Jocko Willink of Extreme Ownership mm-hmm. about yeah. and ask him about the similar thing. I just think it's such a fascinating topic. So anytime I talk to co-authors, I want to ask about it. So yeah, what, what, um, how'd you do it? And what would be your tips uh, for, for folks uh, who, who want to do it? Can I say one thing? I think one of the things we learned through SPS is the book is the first entry point to who you are, to your, your, your coaching, to whatever, wherever you're leading somebody to. And that was very beneficial for Elisa and I, because as we looked at the book and we were going, okay, where are we leading our reader? Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, it's to marriage coaching, because there are so many couples that are just stuck and they Mm -hmm. need somebody there. And so when we were able to unlock that piece, it changed the dynamic of how we're writing the book mm-hmm. now, because it's really Elisa's point of view, because Elisa does all the coaching. We don't do co-coaching. It's Elisa does the coaching. And so that was the first step, but we had to even get to that point to go. And there was some frustration of like, well, what goes in the back? Where are we going? Cause mm-hmm. you guys shared that so, so well. And so once we got to that, then it was game on for her to start writing. Well, and I think, you know, just backing up prior to, prior to the six pillars of intimacy, we've written five books, four of which we wrote together. And those were always, there was just tension, yes, right? Because <laughs> whose point of view, what does this look like? What are the deadlines? All of this, you know, yeah, challenges. Voice. And, you know, unlike some of those other folks that you mentioned, we are also married. So it's not like I get to like go away from my co-author. I have to go to bed with my co-author. <laughs> so there's a whole dynamic there. Um, yes. And it can be, it can be a stressor. And we knew that going into this. And so, you know, I think some of the key things that happened through using SPS was, you know, when there was that whole um, instruction on, you know, what are you going to direct people to? What's going to be that opt-in, right? And so we start thinking about that. And then we think about what's going to be in the back matter and where are we taking them? When we started looking at those two, like Tony said, we knew we were going to coaching in that capacity. So I had still written the rough draft, Mm-hmm. sent it off to, for developmental edits. And I remember the first question that came back from our editor was who wrote this book? Cause it's really confusing and you keep flip-flopping back and forth and it's not clear. Mm-hmm. And that was that really confrontational time in a good way, like good confrontation from an editor saying you need to be more clear. And that's when we sat down and said, okay, what is this going to look like? Yeah. And in our case, what we opted for is I wrote the entire book, the six chapters that deal with each one of the pillars wrap up. Each one of those chapters wraps up with what we call Tony's thoughts Mm -hmm. so that he could come in, he could be the commentary, but it wasn't going back and forth. Super smart. That's so great. Yeah. I love that concept. Uh, And it changes the authorship too, because it it was Tony and Elisa DiLorenzo, but now it's Elisa DiLorenzo with Tony DiLorenzo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, which is totally cool like a little hit to the ego (laughs) little hit to the ego but i think it's the best for the reader right and 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 that's that's a difficult conversation right and i just i just recognize that you i'm looking at your your cover right now and i just noticed that it's a small um small difference but i think it's very smart it's so funny i was given we we did this our first ever get published workshop and in person this past weekend and uh in uh 
Austin, Texas. And I was given almost a similar feedback. I think that is one of the best frameworks on how to do it. Because there's these two co-authors that said, you know, one way I've seen is it's such a primary author. And then I love the Tony's thoughts. Yep. So then it's like you hear from both authors, but it's primarily in a singular voice. Mm -hmm. um, I think the only time I've seen someone do it well differently than that would be extreme ownership, which is they they actually rotate chapters, which how they pulled that off. I, I don't know. I mean, it's they did a great job of making that cohesive. Uh, and when you listen to audiobook, it's interesting because I think they, they they trade off narrations, which is like yeah. kind of interesting. Uh, but I, so I, I think that's a really smart framework that you guys landed on. Definitely worked for us. And and I would say if you're thinking about co-authoring a book, um, you got to make sure you've got strong communication yeah. with your co-author and you've yes. got strategies for handling conflict or you know who's going to ultimately make a decision because there are going to come times when it somebody's got to somebody's got to decide. Where are we yeah. going with this? How are we driving it? And you've got to be able to have those skills in place because otherwise your book might not get published. Yeah. That's smart. I mean, it's just like anything else in any business, right? It's like if, if two people own it, no one owns it. And right. so I think it's smart to define that up front if you are working with a co-author of you have final call on all of these things. I have final call on all of these things, whether that's writing, marketing, whether that's content, packaging, yeah. some sort of delineation uh, of responsibilities and ownership, I think probably leads to a better book and a whole lot less conflict <laughs> All in, of that. in the process. I, I remember I wrote one of my first books with a co-author and I remember you're, you're like us going through and like editing each other's paragraphs and like oh. and then at some point it's just like stop the madness like we've got to stop doing this <laughs> it, it was just not uh, efficient or effective or no not at all all right so we we've we've learned how to better work with co-authors um let's talk uh marketing mm -hmm. uh how did you launch this book um what did the launch look like and what are the two or three things that have sold the most copies since the launch all right, so launch, we did our, we went through again, SPS. How are you doing that pre-launch work, mm -hmm. right? I'm just trying to remember now because it was November. Um, so we went through the whole SPS. Let's get, you know, 100 people on that initial list so we can get the reviews and the ratings mm -hmm. to start. Um, so we did that. I, I want to say our goal is 50 reviews. And we ended up with 40, which I felt was still solid. Mm -hmm. um, and then once we did that, that was really qu quick too. I think that was like within seven, 10 days. And then soon as that was done, it was boom into the full launch, which we did to our audience. Mm -hmm. um, and that was mainly just the one family. So the different outlets we have, mm -hmm. social media, email list, podcasts, we really went after it. We, uh, we used the templates that mm -hmm. you guys gave us, which was fantastic. We saw the spike, the 99 cents for Kindle. Um, and that brought in a ton of new people. We did some book promos mm -hmm. as well. I started putting those, you know, a couple of the first week, a couple of the next week, and just started using those to get those, that initial bump. Yeah. And cool. out of all our books, by far, that was the best. Yes. The best launch ever. Yeah. Mm. For us. Mm. Yeah. What do you attribute that to? Strategy having a strategy, having a plan yeah. instead of, you know, I think in the past, and I can definitely speak to, you know, even the first couple of books, um, sometimes as an author, I think I know I myself got into this place of thinking if I write it, surely it's going to fly off the shelves because my words are magical, right? <laughs> Everybody's going to want the book because it, it's written. And yeah. the reality is, is that, you know, like your parents and your friends know, and nobody else knows Yeah. where this time we, we had told so many people about it, so many people that it was coming. We had a strategy. We did the whole pre-launch. And so by the time we actually released it, it already had momentum instead of mm. just like hoping and praying yeah, that somebody's yeah. going to find my book on Amazon and decide, oh, please, please buy my book. Yeah. And we just stayed diligent. I, I think you guys said it, you know, just the, the number of emails of just going, mm -hmm. Hey, just keep putting those out there. Keep putting them out there. We would text closer friends and, and we would get on lives and do different mm -hmm. things. Um, shortly thereafter though, I was like, okay, we got to keep this going. Mm -hmm. And so got on to Amazon ads. 
uh, cool. hired that out mm -hmm. and that has been ridiculously awesome for us oh cool great yeah. like very how very how so yeah we sell right now we do anywhere between 20 and 40 books a day um and my goal is to get us to 100 and so amazon ads have been the stalwart behind that mm -hmm. though the really the engine behind that and we can we continue to just refine that with our our team so that's been great we've tried facebook ads which didn't do well um, tried some more of the book promo sites and they, they're up and down. So just different stuff, continue to just share it through Instagram. Mm -hmm. Um, and now most recently I'm really wanting to look at, uh, YouTube ads. And so I'm just recently this week just starting to go, okay, what could I do as an author, as an authors, mm -hmm. can we get in front of people through that channel? Yeah. Cool. What, um, what were the top two or three things as part of the launch or even since then that have sold the most books? Um, outside of uh, your internal audience and launch team and those sort of things. Anything else that worked particularly well? I mean, Amazon, obviously. I mean, yeah. they're, just, they're just a juggernaut. Um, you know, because of when we launched it too, we, we didn't do a lot of in, what is it, in-store signings. We mm -hmm. didn't do much of that sort of stuff. We have folks that will pick up, one of the things that we do do because of the book, the nature of the book is called small group studies for mm -hmm. churches. Super smart. And yeah. so that has been great. Like we have a church up in British Columbia right now that they just ended uh, a six week small group study and mm -hmm. they bought, I think, 20, I mean, they just bought 20 books and I think 20 or 40 workbooks and yeah. they just, here you go. Yeah. And so that's somewhere that I'm really working into a lot as well. And I'm seeing that um, churches are buying it for their um, premarital mm -hmm. folks as well. So they're buying like a bundle of 30. They're like, yeah, we just give us 30. And we're like, great, mm -hmm. here you go. Yeah. So really looking at those channels and, and supporting those organizations. Mm -hmm. That's great. That's great. I'm trying to find it. I feel like, uh, Gosh. Oh, yeah. Sorry, I'm giving you guys a bajillion podcast uh, to listen to, but it keeps it keeps triggering thoughts. There's one um, with Jennifer Allwood. Um, she wrote a, a faith based book and she uh, she talked about how she did book clubs Okay. Um, and really smart. And I think if I were you guys, I would lean into book clubs Okay. In churches. Really? I mean, I, th I would lean into it a lot. Uh, and it, you could be the curriculum for a lot of relationship uh, book clubs and small groups yeah. and all that yeah. stuff. I think Mike Todd masterfully did this with his book, Relationship Goals. Mm -hmm. um, Mike Todd Transformation Church out of Oklahoma. He, they did small groups, but then they all, I, I mean, he's tying in messages and stuff to mm -hmm. it, which is um, uh, kind of a bit of an unfair advantage uh, on, on the book sales side of things. Um, but I think it, he did a pretty masterful um, job with that. I think uh, the small groups and book clubs is it's a really, really smart idea. Yeah. No, I love that. You, you touched on reviews. Um, uh, you know, as of the time of recording this interview, you guys are at 175 reviews. Yeah. Uh, and uh, in about six months, yeah. how'd you do it? Any tips uh, or lessons learned or, or, or recommendations for people who want to get more, more reviews on their books? Um, you have to keep asking. Yep. Um, we, within our community, um, we do what we call a take action Thursday, which is just a Facebook live. Uh, we do that three weeks out of the month. And every time we do, I'm updating with what we've done. Um, I, you constantly remind people that they're not leaving a review to do a favor to you. They're leaving a review to do a favor to the person who needs to read your book, mm -hmm. because really I, I, I'm not asking, I, I, I know the book is amazing. I love hearing that you think the book is amazing, but more importantly, the person that's looking in our case, the person that's looking for a book to unlock something in their marriage needs to hear from that person that's leaving a review. This is how it yeah. transformed us. And when you, I just tell people all the time, you are, you are the person that somebody else needs to hear from. And mm. so as you keep asking people, um, just, I think a lot of it has to do with our language. If we sound like we're begging for reviews, if we sound desperate, people yeah. are like, "Yeah, I don't want to." Yeah. But if we remind people that they're doing it as a favor to somebody else who doesn't, like, "Hey, would you do mm. me a favor?" Yeah. Because somebody else needs to know what you think. Then it removes us from the equation as authors and allows people to come alongside as partners. Mm -hmm. That's great. Such a great idea, Chandler. One thing, add something? Yeah. yeah. One thing, as we were just talking, you're like, "Hey, what really moved the book? Audiobook." 
Oh, yeah. oh cool. Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I just, I, I just keep thinking about the, the paperback or the Kindle, but you know, what really moved some stuff was when we got that audio book done. Mm-hmm. Um, and we recorded ourselves, obviously, because we're, we're podcasters, we have the equipment, people hear our voice, we want to, we want them to hear it while we're, while they're listening. But that, mm-hmm. and working with find a way voices, cool. That has been huge yeah. in terms of just getting it out there mm-hmm. into all these different channels and people just listening. That's great. Yeah. What uh, and, and does has the audio book just sold really well, yeah. or and and yeah. why? Is anything specifically that you did to market the audio book, or has it just took off? I don't think it's anything in particular. If we go back to what you said about the framework. Mm-hmm. I really do believe that this book, just by the titling of it, the the cover of it, it just it's grabbing those who are in need. And, and our subtitle is "A Secret to an Extraordinary Marriage." And so I think it, it's just taking off, and people are just seeing it, and the reviews are are just pushing it up there, mm-hmm. not like any of our other books. So it's taken us some time to get there, but I do think it has to do with how it's presented, what mm-hmm. it what it says, the subtitle, and with the way the cover looks. It, yeah. It's just it's nice. It's easy to, to see. It's not mm. distracting. It's yeah. That's what I want. Boom. Here we go. Description is clear. Get it. It's cool. And, and I would I, just to add to that, I would say if you've got an, like in our case, our audience is used to listening to us. Yeah. So we were for being sure. asked for the audiobook almost from the minute beginning that. Oh, cool. Writing. Yeah. So, so there was a hunger for that, a desire yeah. for that. And, you know, when they, we told them they were going to have to wait like two or three months. Cause you know, we were trying to actually launch the paperback. Yeah. Uh, there were a lot of frustrated people uh, in a good way. Yeah. And yeah. so if you know where your audience is, if they are, you know, if you are a podcaster or you've been doing that kind of thing, don't shy away. This is what I would say is don't shy away from doing an audiobook because it sounds like more work. Your people are already used to listening to you. Mm. Get it in their hands, get it, get it in, in their, their ears, ears so that they mm. can consume it in the way that they're used to consuming your information. Yeah. That's great. I'm just making a note of that. Um, two, two things that might be helpful for you guys. Um, this is a kind of quasi interview, quasi coaching call. I love I'm it. like, I love what you're doing. I've got so many ideas. Um, two things that work well um, for me and for my new book published um, is short links for reviews and for audiobooks. So it's like kind of the combination of, of what we're talking about right here. So if anyone's listening to this and is, and is uh, read published or listened to the audiobook of published, go leave me a review, please. Um, <laughs> but uh, the simple link. So uh, for me, it's publishedbook.com forward slash review. Mm-hmm. I'm assuming for you guys, it could be sixpillarsofintimacy.com forward slash review. And that's just a simple thing for you or for your team or any on your podcast. You can yeah. say that and it's just easy. People can remember it. They can type it in. Or yeah. if someone gives you a shout out on social, it's a quick link to say, could you copy and paste that here? Mm-hmm. And, or you're someone on your team. If someone emails in or whatever, hey, can you copy and paste that here? So it just turns praise into reviews. And then similarly, uh, a, a short link, just a redirect, right? Um, for uh, uh, Audible. And, yeah. you know, Audible has, and so I do publishedbook.com forward slash Audible. Mm-hmm. And the pitch is, hey, you can get a free copy of the book um, it, on Audible if you want to listen to it. And um, you've got the Audible bounty program, which Audible will pay you 25 to 75, I think maybe 7,500 bucks per person that signs up for Audible through your link. And so either way, they're getting a free book. If they sign up for a trial for Audible, they get a free copy of the book. Or if they already have an Audible membership, they can just use one of their credits, kind of a free copy. Um, and so it's, it's either way, they can get a free audiobook. It's a simple way to, to promote the audiobook on your podcast or whatever yeah. else. When, when you have to say a link, it's just e- an easy way. Oh, it's sixpillarsofnc.com forward slash Audible. Yeah. Um, yep. check out the audiobook. So yeah, those are love things it. That, that worked well that might work for you. Kind of home stretch here. I've got a couple final questions. What was the most, you alluded to this earlier, what was the most helpful part about uh, working with self-publishing school throughout this process? Most helpful? Uh, I would say without a doubt, having a personal coach. Um, we haven't written any of the other books with one with a coach. And so, so the accountability, the resources, the direction, I mean, kind of like what you just, literally what you just did for us. Oh, 
here's something that would be helpful. Um, in so many of our conversations with yeah. Kirk, whether we were like, hey, Kirk, you know, look at the cover. What do you think? And he's like, all right, well, let's move this up and get into the top third or let's do this. Or, mm -hmm. hey, Kirk, you know, like I just sent the book off to the editor and, and I'm like totally stressed about, you know, how much redlining is going to come back. And he's like, take a deep mm -hmm. breath. Remember, it's going to yeah. make your book better. Um, yeah. Whatever, whatever we needed, it did it meant that you and I didn't have to go like try and figure it out on our own. Having a coach that said, hey, check out these couple of resources. And we never felt overwhelmed no. by the process. And I think that's a big thing, you know, as authors who had previously self-published, there in the past had been a lot of times when we felt overwhelmed mm. by the process and having yeah. resources, having a coach that just said, this is your next step. Like if we wanted yeah. to get three steps ahead, he would be like, uh-uh. You are not there yet. <laughs> nice try. Back it up. Next coaching <laughs> call, we'll talk about. And, yeah. I, was, and was, I can yeah, appreciate that, right? Yeah. Don't get don't get too far ahead. And so for me, yeah. that was the biggest. I mean, we tell everyone about SPS. I'm like, why are you trying to write a book by yourself? Yeah. Like, don't don't be silly. Yeah. Be silly. And for me, the templates yeah. early on mm -hmm. were helpful mm -hmm. because as Elisa's writing, I'm the one making sure everything's going mm -hmm. in properly into those Google Docs and. Cool. and, and massaging all that stuff for so I don't know why that still at this point in time to me was just so important I guess because oh, yeah. times before like I would the be book like outline to, template yeah yeah I yeah. would scour yeah. the internet for all these pieces and it just took something it was just easy enough it's like yeah. here it is use mm -hmm. this use this use this use this boom here's a template for our book let's do it this way and so to me that cool. just was like ah oh, here it is here yeah. we go let's go boom 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 yeah that's great that's awesome to hear. What would be uh, your 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 thoughts for anyone who's thinking about working with us? Do it. Do it. Like don't like don't don't <laughs> waste like, your time. I mean, you can look yeah. for others. I'm yeah. sure, and we've had many of friends who've gone other ways, and they come back asking a million questions, mm -hmm. and it actually yeah. frustrates me, Chandler. Yeah. I, I had a guy yeah. who like went another way and came back, and he's texting me like, "Hey, can I take you to lunch and talk about your launch process?" And I'm going. But who, 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 who are you, are you working, with? working with who's supposed to do this for you? Yeah. Well, they really don't have one. I'm going, what? Like, We're not the, going to then lunch. why didn't you go with SPS like I told yeah. you? <laughs> yeah. so, Man, you guys so, are amazing. Holy cow. I appreciate like, it. Well, because, it, you know, it is one of those things. I mean, people know we have a lot of books. People know the success of this book. Yeah. And people, we know a lot of people that want to be writers. Right. They want to they, they want to publish. They want to publish. And so it's, you know, we've had the before and after. We know. And so look, if you're on the fence and yeah. you've got that book inside of you that you know you're supposed to write, you've already wasted enough time yeah. thinking and overthinking this. Just do it and get your book done. And can I say one thing to that too? Our other books would take us about a year to publish from start to finish. We jumped into SPS. We put our heads down. We knew what we needed to do. Everything was in order. And we went from start to finish in five months. From pen to paper to launch in five months, it would not have been done. Wow. So really want to get the book out. Cool. Go do it. You don't need to That's sit cool. around and waste time. Mm -hmm. You know? Thank you. Yeah. That's awesome. Thank you guys so much for saying that. Um, if people are listening and or watching and uh, you want to chat about working with us, go to self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. That's self-publishingschool.com forward slash apply. Book a call with the team. We'd love to chat with you about your book, your goals for your book, your next steps and how we might be able to help. Uh, this has been fun. Uh, I've got two questions. This is almost like, uh, this is like where I should normally uh, end the interview, but I, I've got a couple questions and I'm yeah. like, uh, well, I'm going to give you, you guys obviously shout out the book and all that stuff where people can buy it. But before then, I, I almost want to ask a couple of questions to give a couple of thoughts because I think this might be helpful for people who are listening as well. Um, first question would be, do you guys have any sort of quiz or assessment along with the book? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Great. It's, cool. it's, it's okay. one of the best opt-ins we've ever had. We get about a 57, 57% opt-in rate. I bet. On the, on the bet. website, on the book. And we get book a, on the thank you page. Yeah, we have 100% opt-in. Oh yeah, we, we, we used it so for the quiz. Time. Okay, cool, oh, cool, yeah. cool, cool, cool. And then do you use <laughs> the, um, it, this is in published, the, uh, oh, cool, page 190. Have you went through any of the, the, that content on the framework for using a quiz to sell more books? sell more books which improves the virality i gotta, go look, I gotta go look at that page 190 
yeah page 190 check that out and then also listen to the uh, episode with uh with gary chapman i know i've plugged that one before but he taught i mean that that five love languages quiz has been taken 50 million times and the book has been sold 10 or 12 million copies and so just 17 million, 17 million. not that yeah. we're checking <laughs> but you know we do know we do know how many yeah. we love yeah. we love dr chapman and that's who yeah. we're that's who we're at that's the benchmark yeah. That's, yeah. that's cool that's be. i think the quiz um, makes a lot of sense and especially being very intentional about incorporating that in um, and using the quiz to drive book sales using the book sales for quiz and 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 ascending into the the, the marriage coaching and that sort of thing my second thing which is less of a question but more of just an encouragement would be i would keep talking about this book and keep marketing it. i mean i talk about the one-year launch there's a whole chapter on that and about building evergreen assets and and, and, and doing one-off promos and all that stuff. But I think you guys really have something special here and I would keep marketing it until the cows come home. <laughs> I mean, just like, uh, I would just go on that one year launch and I think you're on it right now. Um, you know, here we are six months later, but I think there's just so much more upside for this book. So I think it's beautiful what you guys have created and the best is yet to come. Definitely. It's and exciting. publishing on audiobook too, right? What's that? Oh yeah, publishes on Audible uh, and audiobook and all that, so you can you can listen to it instead. It's narrated by me. There's one thing in the review chapter, uh, which I, I, I that you I'm not going to spoil it here, but I think you might like that you might be able to incorporate into your audiobook um, to help you get more reviews. So uh, I, I'll, I'll leave it at that. Uh, but Tony, Elisa, this has been amazing. Um, what would be, uh, uh, where can people go to find out more? Uh, about you guys to buy your book, uh, yeah. all that good stuff. Yeah, best place to go to find out all about us, find mm -hmm. our podcast, all our resources, oneextraordinarymarriage.com. You can find the book there. If you do want to go buy the book, though, directly on Amazon, sixpillarsofintimacy.com. It will take you right there. Buy whatever edition fancies mm -hmm. you. Cool. That's awesome. Tony, Elisa, y'all are amazing and inspiring. Amazing. Keep up the great work. Uh, thank you for coming on the show. Thanks, Thanks Chandler. Chandler.